It's small town life with the usual small town crime, but the hot, humid air in God fearing Lawrence County, Alabama would breed a peculiar sort of wickedness. There's no telling what somebody's willing to do. Captain Dennis Sharp's usual beat is busting drug offenders, but he's forced to think outside the box when faced with a very different kind of criminal. A sick person. This is a demented, evil person's thinking. Living here in Lawrence County is Lindsay Grindle, a young single mom trained as an emergency technician who's caught up in a whirlwind romance with another EMT, Matt Treadway. I really hit it off with her and I liked what she appeared to be at the time and we ended up dating for approximately five or six months. The romance flames out, but not long after that, Lindsay finds out she's pregnant and gives birth to their baby, a little boy named Aiden. I was fully preparing to step up the plate and take on the role of father and be there for the child. Matt has a pair of helping hands, his mom, Sandy, who takes an instant shine to her precious new grandson. She adored my son, absolutely adored my son. And she'd do anything in the world to protect him and protect us. And soon, Matt says, they'd be forced to step in to protect Aiden. He claims Lindsay's not taking good care of their baby. In fact, at one point, Aiden's weight is so dangerously low, he has to be hospitalized. He had actually lost weight. When he was born, he was 8 pounds, 7 ounces, 20 inches long. When he got admitted into the hospital, he was 7 pounds, 9 ounces, and that was at 6 weeks. Lindsay, the overwhelmed mom, is so groggy at the hospital, nurses can barely rouse her to feed Aiden. All this noted in court documents during a bitter custody battle. Even at the hospital, after telling Lindsay to feed him every two hours, they were still time frames of eight to 12 hours that she wouldn't feed him. And so the doctor ordered the nurses to do all feedings. The hospital's report is damning. Matt sues for emergency custody and gets it. Aiden comes to live full time with dad, Matt, and grandma, Sandy. I done had a custody order from uh, the judge on our case to go and get him. So you had custody of your son? Yes, ma'am. Lindsay had supervised visitation? Yes, ma'am. Then, in September of 2015, Lindsay starts to put up a fight. She petitions the court for unsupervised visitation. Lindsay wants her baby back. Certain members of Matt's family aren't about to let that happen. Did your mom ever express concerns about your son's safety with Lindsay? We was worried that if she was around him, without being supervised at that point in time, that it would go back as failure to thrive. He wouldn't thrive in her care and prosper. That's when Grandma Sandy takes matters into her own hands. She starts texting with a friend of Matt's, a man who claims to have connections, someone who can get problems solved permanently. She had approached him about if he knew any hitmen that could conduct a murder for hire. It starts with the friend's foreboding text, how bad do you want the roach problems gone? And I mean gone. Sandy responds, very, very, very bad. I hate roaches. The friend's chilling offer? I got a direct contact with good bug spray, LOL for real. It appears to be in code, code that cops say was easy to crack. During the text message conversation, she wouldn't say outright say, you know, I need a hit man kill somebody. She they used the, ling the lingo of uh, exterminator, take care of a roach problem. Lindsay is the subject of all of this. That's who she wants exterminated. Yes. Sandy goes on to type this. I can deal with them being gone for good and never coming back. The roaches have to go. This is a demented, evil person's thinking because somebody's going to get visitation, unsupervised visitation back. I'm going to have them killed. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Days later, Sandra meets with the exterminator himself, the rendezvous with the hitman eerily caught on camera. Sandra hands over a folder filled with meticulous research, schedules, addresses, and photos of the target. Uh, I mean, she, she had it pretty detailed out what she wanted. 
So she basically had a murder for hire packet. If That's you will. correct. Any request? I think like sure. There's just one more detail. Let me tell you how much gonna be. You got yeah. seven people. Okay, yeah, I can do that. What about that? Sandra makes a down payment of 750 bucks and promises the rest of the money when the hit goes down. All right, that's fine. I'll, I'll call you when it's done and I'll collect the rest of the money, all right? All right, well, I'll see you in a few days. A little more than a month later, the exterminator finishes his job and he's got proof. These horrifying images arrive in Grandma Sandy's inbox. Photos of little Aiden's mom lying in a pool of blood. She wanted proof of death, which was going to be a picture after the murder was committed. But do these pictures tell the whole story? Coming up, did Granny get away with murder? You ain't got no problems now. Thank you very much. Or is she the one about to be squashed like a bug? Sandra made a comment. I was so nervous, I kept waiting for the handcuffs to come out. I said before I didn't want no picture, but I think I do. Well, I don't have a problem with that. Okay, uh, I didn't hear you did. She wanted proof of death, which was going to be a picture after the murder was supposedly committed. 